Uh, I was going to play around with uh, Post on the Twitter. All right, I'm messing with my camera a little bit. If I can move it somewhere interesting. I think I can like mount this to this thing. Big forehead. Well, I can't honestly fix the camera right now because I just don't. I need like a tripod or something or I can put it even further away. But I don't think that's better either. What would it look like if I actually just put it on my monitor? Well, that looks even worse. I don't think that looks good at all, personally. Um, on top of my loot bug. I don't like that either. Not a big fan. I feel like it needs to be further away or or face me more. I'm not really sure.
It's also not a very attractive backdrop. If I put it here. Just gonna leave it over here for now. I'm used to this. Might not look great, but I'm used to it. That's the important thing. All right, so the plan for tonight. is uh, I was talking about internet time with a friend of mine online. And um, long pause, long pause. And we ended up talking about Swatch internet time. And I thought oh, it would be cool to make a, make a, uh, uh, make a menu bar app that displays the current Swatch internet time. <clears throat> uh, so I Googled Swatch internet time Mac OS menu bar, and I found an existing app called Beat Bar that shows Swatch internet time in the menu bar. So basically the idea of, of what I had with my friend. A couple downsides to this app. Uh, number one, it uses Swift UI, which is why it's got this um, this little drop down menu thing over here. Uh, so it's only compatible with Macs that have been updated to Catalina, at least, you know, which is two years ago now. So it has been a span of time, but there are people out there who are using perfectly good Macs, like my 2012 Retina MacBook 12 MacBook Pro that uh, don't support Catalina. I also have an iMac in the closet that runs my Plex server that also can't be updated to Catalina. And recently even Docker doesn't work on it anymore, which is very sad. Uh, so in that context, there's there's potential for uh, Mac OS menu bar swatch internet time app that supports more than just Catalina. Uh, it's the same thing that uh, my Pi bar, my Pi hole app, Pi bar. It uh, if it differentiates itself from competitors by being a, like a non Swift UI Mac OS app, so it supports it supports older older versions of Mac OS. Uh, and it might be niche, but there's there's definitely people out there who don't want to update to Catalina or to Monterey for whatever reason, for whatever ideological, idiosyncratic reason. Um, so there are people out there who care about that, and so I care about them. Uh, secondly, this interface is weird. Okay, so I haven't used it myself, um, but it says that uh, this first bar adjusts the the granularity of internet time because there's like uh you know there's sub beats technically in theory um like a you know eight seven eight seven five point one or two or something like that there's something there's something like that uh and then the second slider from what my understanding is uh changes this time or changes both times so what you can do is you can adjust the slider to uh, you know a certain time and then it can tell you what the time is there it says this somewhere it's pulling on the bottom time slider however it lets you select a local time in rounded increments of 15 minutes while showing an accurate unrounded translation of this value in beats um, so this is just kind of like a uh, an, an estimator uh, which is uh, i can understand why they why they built this in, but this slider is weird. Just the two sliders without any like clear indication of what they do is kind of interesting. Um, but I don't know. It says sometimes beats or times are rounded and other times they are not. 
Depending on the slider, you pull different values or rounded. For example, pulling on the top slider lets you select beats and round increments of 10 while showing an accurate. Oh, okay. So this slider is like, um, like an overall estimator thing. So this slider lets you change the beat and you see what time changes here. And then this slider changes um, your local time. Just kind of a weird interface. It's a weird interface. So I just don't, I feel like I could improve on this in some, in some way. The add to calendar thing's interesting. Um, I kind of it would be it would be more useful if there was like a video showing how these use cases work. Um, but I I get the feeling that the point is that someone tells you, hey, I want to meet with you at, at five hundred. You you don't know what time at five hundred is. You know you have an internalized switch swatch internet time. So you need some method to uh, to translate internet time into your local time. So it's an interesting concept. Uh, I don't really like the interface. I uh, yeah, I just feel like I feel like it could be improved upon in some way. Um, but most of all, what bothers me about this this Beat Bar app is that it's on the Mac App Store, and it's four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. I, you know, I try not to be. I try not to be. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna say elitist, but I don't. I don't know if it's elitist. It's just that a little simple app like this. Why isn't it open source? You know, like why aren't you giving it away for free? You know, and I mean, I know you can say that about a lot of apps, but but something like this takes you like what an hour to build, an hour or two to build. Someone, someone should clip this, not that anyone's watching right now, but someone should clip this so that we can see at the end of this project how long it actually took me to build it. Either way, I see something like this, and I think this should be a gift to the world. You know, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be some sort of paid app that's closed source. And, and you know, it's just, it's just weird to me. So anyway, I want to uh, build, I want to build this app or a better version of this app. Um, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to do a couple things. First up, I don't think I have, um, I don't think I have my PyBar project locally, but let's check out, check it out. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to use that. That's the only menu bar app I've built so far is PyBar. So I'm going to need to borrow some code from there. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We have PyBar. So let's go to github.com slash amiantos slash PyBar. And let's pull this down. No, I want to use SSH. I have to log in to get the SSH link? Probably. Hold on a second. All right, uh, get clone, pi bar. All right, and while we're here, we're gonna open up Xcode. I gotta move my camera down a little bit. There you go. All right, let's start a new project. I gotta turn on streamer mode in my... There you go, anyway. All right, let's start a new project. I have to double click this. Oh, it just froze. Uh, it didn't ask me for a project name or anything. Oh, there we go, okay. All right, Mac OS.
Man, there's some stuff that you need to do when you're building a menu bar app, and I don't remember any of the process of it at all. So I'm just going to, well, I can struggle through it, or I can Google the original source, Mac OS menu bar app Xcode. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna follow this guide um, because this looks probably like what I followed when I was building PyBar originally. Um, but then also at the same time, let's open up. Let's open up um, PyBar. Hello, my sole viewer. Probably Dan. Hi, Dan. All right. Well, I'll keep that open in the background because we might need it. All right. We're going to name this. Are you still not done? Trying to get that beat app. Thank you. Yeah, I just started. Haven't even named it yet. I was thinking about just calling it Internet Time. Because, like, I don't, I don't see any reason why they called it Beat Bar. No, no reason. It's just Twee. Um, and then, yeah, if you Google or if you look for internet time, I beat time, internet time clock beat bar is the last option for internet time. Yeah, I know. I get that it's called beat bar because it's showing beat time, but technically it's like officially called swatch internet time, you know? Not called beat time. Well, it's like dot beat time. All right, fine. But as far as I know, I always called it internet time. Uh, oh, the swatch dot beat was the watch. Well, either way, for now, I'm just going to call it internet time. Why don't I call it time bar? I can mess with. Uh, no, that doesn't even. That doesn't even relate at all. Um, unless there's, you have a better idea than uh, B bar and internet time. At time, I don't think you can put special characters like that in an app name. We could call it, um, all right, well, at least for now, call it internet time. Organization identifier, internet time. It's under my team. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, this guy's app store description is stupid, too. I don't like it. 2020, am I right? We're all socially distant and working remote. We're often asked to pick a time to meet coworkers, family members, our gaming clan, what have you. Staring out of our makeshift home offices, we don't always know what day it is, much less the respective time zones of all our compatriots. Pick a time is hard, and it involves math. Ew. Internet. Beat time solved this back in 1998, and Beat Bar lets us use it today. What? That's not... I don't... It's just, it's just, it's just jerking, jerking himself off with his cleverness. All right. Anyway, my interface is going to be a storyboard. Right, I'm going to go back to this. Oh, they're using Swift UI. Fuck that. I don't want to use Swift UI. Don't need, I don't need to include tests. All right, we're gonna get started. Coding. 
just going to put it in the folder in the right place. Or do I have to create a folder? Create a folder. Okay, just to see what folder it stuck it in. God damn it. Oh, I hate this. Oh, I want to move the contents of internet time. Okay, just move it back to coding. All right. How do you rename? How do you rename a directory in a terminal? Oh, you like move, move. Internet time to internet, internet, internet time. There we go. All right. Cool. All right. Go back to coding, go to internet time, open up the project. All right, so we're going to do a little compare and contrast of my original project. And uh, see how all this worked. I got a lot of stuff in here. Ooh, the font's big. Big font. All right, let's go to the app delegate. It says add the following property to the class. I have not, I did not do that in PyBar, okay? Doesn't look like I did that in PyBar. Some stuff has changed. There's no more NS application main. There's an at main. Uh, let's see. Client assets. Interesting. What happens if I just run this thing? Let's see what happens. It's probably gonna bring up um, like an empty view or something. Got an icon coming up. There we go. All right, there's internet time so far. It's got a window we don't need. Um, all right, so let's look at the storyboard. Well, before I hastily delete all this stuff, I should definitely figure out uh, what in here I might need. Preferences view controllers, a window view controller. Okay, so none of this is related to the actual menu bar app. So how does the menu bar get created? I don't see anything in here that says NS status bar. Oh, here we go. Main menu controller. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'll come back to this, but for now we're just gonna. So that bed from your hand is supposed to arrive Friday as an arrival date now of Monday by nine p.m. at the latest. It's eight thirty now. I don't think it's arriving today. Maybe it'll show up at uh, nine thirty.
Besides, what do you really need a bed frame for anyway? How big is your bed? Let me ask you that question, sir. How big is your bed? Yeah, queen bed, just swimming around in all that space. Oh, is it a window? All right, I'm trying to figure out what I need to, uh, oh, main menu, check that out. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, that didn't create a controller though. Let's create a new new controller. Call this main menu. Well, let me make sure there's not like a controller thing in here somewhere. Doesn't look like it. Nope. All right, let's just. All right, what's in here? Or how I ever learned any of this shit. Class main menu controller. Preferences, I don't need any of that, that's all custom. Okay, let's look at some of these build settings for the shit. Main interface, main menu. Let's go with deployment target. Let's go back for 10.12 and we'll say main menu. Okay, let's see what happens now. I didn't actually set up any of the important stuff yet. Build failed. Oh, I broke something again already. All right, well, let's set some more stuff up first. In my main menu view, I have a whatever this is, it's a menu. My main menu doesn't really need anything in it, but we'll leave that in there. And then what we want to do is menu, menu, there we go. All right, we'll, we'll leave that in place for now. Let's see, is this menu attached to anything? Yeah, that gives you a little get history right in the sidebar. It's pretty nifty. And this menu doesn't 
doesn't relate to anything at all, as far as I can tell. It's connected to the app delegate and the main menu controller. Okay. Uh, I think this is the right place. One second. Font manager. Nope. 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 Okay. How do I get the uh, main menu controller in here? Custom class main menu controller. What if I drop this in here? Custom class. Hmm. It's getting warm in here. How does this work? Oh, someone says, uh, no, I don't want to pop over. Interesting. All right. So I'm a little stuck at the moment just because I don't know. How to assign this to um, main menu controller? Well, maybe I'll just make a controller view controller in here. Is oh, That doesn't work. All right, let's go back to this main menu controller here. Let's see what's going on here. And it's import Coco. Maybe it's because this isn't. Uh... Oh, it's a zib. And then this is probably not a zib. Oh, no, it is a zib. How did you get that other view controller in here? Okay, well, anyway, for now, I'm going to continue on. Let's try to get uh, let's try to get some stuff in place. Get the icon in there. Don't need any of that. What about all these outlets. Be nice if um. Menu status menu disable about action. Life cycle. Don't need that. Delete that. Don't need that at the moment. All right, awake from nib override. Okay, don't need any of this either. Okay, we need an asset named icon. We're gonna copy this one for now just because we have it nearby. Uh, 
Okay, so now I need to figure out how to set this main menu. If I do file owner, file owner, and this object. App delegate. Okay, so this app delegate. It's already fucked something up. This view doesn't have an app delegate thing. This one does. How is it here? Just watching me getting confused and mad. That's what's that's what's going on here. Uh, add controller to the zip. Does this have a file? Get menu. I don't understand this application thing either. Oh, it's there too. Okay, there must be something I'm missing here. Okay, maybe I should uh, do this a different way. Okay, none of this is, well, I'll keep that for the moment, but I'm gonna delete this. And this was supposed to be deleted. A new file. Maybe I should call it a window or an application. What is this called? Okay, that didn't give me that didn't give me what I wanted either. I don't want a storyboard. It's just not creating uh Get a controller too. Well, maybe there's a view for this, or a, a guide for this Mac OS main menu controller.
And what are the connections on this menu look like? Delegate to the app delegate and main menu to the app controller. Okay, well I don't have app delegate. So right there I've got a problem. Maybe I need to get this in here somehow. Hey, look at that, it's still connected to, that's not good. Cause I copy and pasted that line from the other place, it's, Go away. Why is it acting like it's connected to? How incredibly frustrating. Well, anyway, this should be connected to something over here. It's gonna be something stupid somewhere, I bet. Oh, this is already incredibly frustrating because I need to create some connections, but I can't. Yeah, eventually I'll futz around and find a, a Google that Oh, drag an instance of an NSO object into your shit. Oh, there we go. Uh, there we go. That one can be the app delegate. And then this one can be the main menu controller. All right. Now we're now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so the main menu needs to be, needs this to be connected to the app delegate. And then main menu itself needs to be connected. The main menu controller, hold on a second. And then this needs to connect to this. There we go. All right, and let's set the app delegate, make sure that's okay. App delegate, menu, main menu controller, view menu. 
Uh, all right, what happens if I run this now? Nothing, doesn't work. Merge Swift module. Something changed again. Point twelve, ten point two. What did I change? Something's got an incorrect deployment target. I don't think I need this main storyboard anymore. Oh, I still have it. All right. All right, what's it upset about? Let's just do a clean and fresh build. Here we go. All right, check it out. We've got a menu bar, um, a thing in the menu bar now. So we don't really want it to have an icon like that, unless we do. Maybe we want like an at symbol or something. So let's look at this asset. What is it? It's a PDF, 22 pixels. Uh, let's go on noun project. Uh, at symbol, let's just find an at symbol icon. That's fun. It's jovial. That's cute. All right. Uh, I'll download the SVG. In theory. Okay, it did download. All right, now I'm gonna go into Figma. I'm gonna switch my account. I'm gonna go into a random, a random file. Drag this in here. Oh. All right. Um, and then let's get rid of the padding all around it. This is what I really want. I just want this group. There we go. And I want 20.2001. That's uh, slightly uneven. I'll delete this. I have to turn this group into um, frame it. All right. What I really want is I want it to be 22 by 22, but whatever. I'm going to export it as a PDF. And I want it. Oh, I got to resize it to 22 by 22. Okay, I wonder if I can do this. Good enough. Why is it just not notifying me about any of this shit? All right, well, either way, we've got our icon. Let's drag it into the right place. Swap that out. Then we have a little at symbol. Let's run it again. Don't ask me again. Just replace it. There you go. Now we've got a big ass at symbol that is not properly sized at all. Okay, so maybe I was maybe I should have left the padding in it. I didn't realize that my that my noun that my other icon was um, different, special. Okay, so let's undo this a little bit. Let's 
So I'm doing all right, redo. All right, let's just export this at 22 pixels and see how it does. What if I do 22 for 22? Export uh, PDF. Drag this in here. Okay, smaller. And uh, uh, still looks a little big to me, but it actually kind of fits in pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, especially if it was if it was over here next to the other iOS icons, it it, it looks it looks pretty okay to me. All right, so now all we need to do is um, get the internet time in there. Uh, all right, so we'll have it start off with um, zero zero zero. And we don't actually need a menu. I'm going to turn that off for now. I'm going to turn that off for now. Let's restart it. There we go. All right, so now it doesn't do anything when you click on it, but that's OK. You don't need it to actually do anything when you click on it at the moment. All right, and we're going to put in some zeros in there to start off with. See how we like that zero zero zero. All right, already feel like it looks nicer than beat bar. That beat bar. Look at that piddly little at symbol. Disgusting. I always knew we'd be able to do better than that. All right, I'm gonna need to probably resize that at symbol a little bit. Maybe I should just do that now while I'm here. Um, we just want to increase the padding on it. To be honest, so. Uh, the that would be 22 pixels, so we just need to make this a little bit smaller. Can we make it smaller from the center? Okay, that might be too small, but we'll try it out. Oop, brought up my trash. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, it looks a little bit better, actually. I like that. I like that. We might want to make it a... Oh, well, that actually might be a good size. That might be a pretty good size. We'll leave that there for now. How does it look in light mode? Okay, light mode doesn't actually change anything in regards to the menu bar anymore. All right. All right, so... Now we have to figure out how to do internet time and switch in Swift. Swift swatch internet time. Um, GitHub topics. Yeah, look, there's a crappy swatch beat store on the app. Wow, what a beautiful app. Gives wrong time. Oh, okay. GitHub Topics. Let's see if anyone's written one in Swift. There's one in Swift. Net time, a time zone, a neutral time on your iOS device and Apple Watch. Net time is currently available in the Apple App Store. Let's look at it. For, oh, look, he's got two decimal points. I guess it would have been pretty easy to figure out swatch time by scratch. 86.4 seconds. So simple, it just works. A unique way to tell the time. Like it even gives you a little calculator thing. All right, so let's poke around in this guy's code. I bet we can uh, figure out uh, what he's doing. Like int plus beats. Total beats float float self times eight six four. So this is an extension just to uh, convert. So he's storing time as an integer, and then he's using an extension to get beats from it. 
So if we look at his, uh, let's look at this date plus beats, calendar, time zone. So he's built two extensions. All right, before I steal the code promiscuously from this, is it, oh, MIT license, so I can steal it. Which is pretty good news, good news. Calculate view controller. Set beats row, calendar current date components. Self time zone, test time zone. What is this? That's some stuff I've never seen before. Oh, some of the stuff's for test mode. I don't understand what this guy's doing. If app store. Oh, he's doing the store the requesting review thing in there. All right, so I'm slightly confused. Where is he setting anything to Beats label? Oh, he's binding it to... Um, I wonder if you can bind stuff in a... He's doing stuff I've never done before, where it seems like he's using some sort of, like, um, observable thing with... Oh, he's, it's all reactive. That's what... Okay, that's what, I didn't see all this RX Swift, RX Coco stuff in there. Okay, so he's... He's using like React style programming in iOS to to update his interface, which is cuckoo bananas, but for such a simple app. But the gist is that uh, well, I don't. I still don't a hundred percent fully understand what he's doing here. Self date beats. Okay, so he's getting like the current date. I'm just gonna I'm gonna steal these two files. This date plus beats uh, is a good file. I'm gonna steal this. Switch file. Date plus beats. Paste that in here. I'm going to paste a link um, to this. No, not to this. I'd like to link to this specific version. There we go. All right, let's save that. And his other file, int plus beats. I don't know if I'm actually going to need this. But I'm gonna jack it too. Actually, typically my style would be to just put this stuff in extensions. Um, but I'm just gonna um, all right. Does seem like we need to set up some sort of timer thing or something, but all right. So he's getting a date. And he's getting the bait beat. So let's see Swift get current date and time. 
this date. Okay, well, let's just get um, just as a test, let's get date and then title can be date plus beats. Let's see what happens. Cannot assign type of float to type string. Oh, um, how do you do this now? Isn't it something like this? There we go. We've got we've got beats in the in the in the ta in the menu bar. Um. So now it's just uh, making it stay updated. Uh, first up, is that actually accurate? No, 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 no. Swatch. Uh, that's not swatch internet time. It is now 171 beats. Okay, so yeah, 55 seconds go 171. We're right. All right. Uh, so now the question is, do we want to allow decimals? Do we want to disallow decimals? I guess we can make that an option. Where do you, if you want decimals, you can get decimals. If you don't, then you don't. So like if we just wanted an integer. Got one seven one. I don't know if you, I don't even think you can see that on screen. Isn't there a um, built in Mac OS? Uh. Show me accessibility. Do a zoom. Command. Command option eight. Oh, oh, okay. That's not what I want. I want a picture and picture zoom. There we go. Can I move this around somewhere? Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, well. Well, now you can't see it anymore. Okay, what did I do wrong here? There we go. I want that to just stay there. No, stay there. Is it, why is it following my mouse now? Okay, let's turn that shit off. Advanced. When zoomed in screen edge is only one pointer. Continuously only one pointer reaches an edge. Oh, I want it to be forever. I don't want it to move. Oh, well. Anyway, there you go. You can see it. See it working. It totally wasn't following my mouse for a minute there, I thought. Anyway. All right, so we've got that. Um, let's turn the main, main menu back on because we are going to have like preferences and an about or something like that, aren't we? Uh, and then we also need to turn off the uh, icon because there's an icon down there and we don't want that. So first up, let's assume we're going to kind of have the same sort of menu options that we have here. We're going to have a quit. And quit's going to have a shortcut key of command Q. And 
go. Make sure I get all that in the right spots. And Q enabled. Uh, and as this one should be about, so we need a keyboard shortcut. And then one of these needs preferences. Oops. And the keyboard shortcut for preferences is always command comma. All right, got a menu set up. It doesn't do anything yet. Maybe I should put in one of these divider lines. What is this thing? Separator menu item, there we go. Put that in there, that looks nicer. It's more professional that way. Okay, all right, so the main, the main meat of this app is updating the time over and over again. So we just need to figure out how to do that in a safe way. Um, how do I do it in PyBar? It's a good question. What am I doing in PyBar in the manager? Update intervals, a time interval. There's an operation queue. I don't think I need that yet. I need the timer. Let's get both of these things. We might need both of these. Timer and a time interval. Uh, let's set update interval. Let's set it to one second. Don't need a time interval. One. Uh, Or should we run it? Oh, that's it. Set polling rate, disable network, enable network, function start timer. Okay, we're gonna want this. Update pie hole, update, enter. Internet time. Uh, we don't have this cool log class, but let's let's steal it. Uh, it must be somewhere in here somewhere. Logging. I'm gonna copy this file. I can. I'm gonna copy this file. Copy, finish. Okay, hopefully it copied. Okay, it's in the right place. All right, so now we have a cool logger. And then we just need to make sure that, where was that? That was in, is that an app delegate? Where was that? It was in PyBar Manager. All right, it seems like this should be pretty easy. Uh, we just need to create the update internet, sorry, func update internet time. And we're just gonna say, I wonder if I can, um, Do something like this. That's all we really want to do. I'm going to get rid of the end conversion so we can see it updating more quickly. And then we want to do start timer. Fix this. 
All right, let's see what happens. Should just update every second. There you go. All right, and as we know, internet time doesn't update every second. It just updates uh, every 60 seconds. Self beats. Uh, over here in int, let's see, int. Int plus beats, 86.4 cent. Yeah, so we probably just really wanted to update. Well, so the problem with having to update every beat specifically um, is that we don't know like when the beat actually changes. I guess we could do something like we could we could have it check every second, but instead of actually updating every second, we check to see if the like the hard beat number changed <laughs> or just the number changed in general according to our preferences. <laughs> we don't really need sub beats, so maybe we should round it to end. Um. <coughs> oh. All right, so now it's updating every second, but you know, it's only going to actually change when the time changes. All right, so basically, at this point, <coughs> we've got the app. We don't have preferences or about or any of that stuff yet, but so far we've got, we've pretty much got the whole app going. Uh, I do want to do, um, I do want to do some sort of cool time zone estimator thing, but I don't really like the example that any of the apps I've seen so far do where I like makes you pick a time. You know, I feel like it should, like there's gotta be a better way to do it. Cause I kind of like the time zone. Where's the time zone? Um, it's like in system preferences, you get this cool thing with a little map on it. It would be cool if there was like a way to like show an internet time and then what time it is in different regions for that internet time. I don't know, I have to think about it. Because I do feel like there is a utility in being able to say like, hey, this time my time corresponds to what in internet time? But the interface, the interface for doing that uh, seems like a pickle. Like this other guy, you know, this guy did some sort of slider system where you're sliding, you're changing the internet time and seeing how your time updates or you're changing um, sorry, yeah, you're changing the internet time and seeing how your time changes, or you're changing your time and seeing how the internet time changes. I'm not really a big fan of of that. And then this other this other app, um, based on the screenshots. Now, as you like, actually pick the time and the time zone. Maybe it should be something like you pick a time, but the time is agnostic. You know, like you say, oh, 3 p.m., and then underneath that, it shows you the internet time for 3 p.m. in a big selection of time zones. You know, like every, ma every major time zone, basically. Um, that could be nifty. Um, I don't want to create the GitHub repo for this now, but I guess I don't need to create the, I don't need to create the repo yet. Let's see somewhere in here, there's a energy impact low or zero. That's good. I 
no disk, 22 megs of memory for such a tiny little app. No CPU time used. All right, where's the, where's the source control shit? How do I stage stuff? I don't know how to work this shit. I'm just gonna open this up and get up. There you go. All right, no upstream configured yet, so I don't need to do anything with that. All right, I'm gonna take a quick, quick break to go, uh, you know, handle, handle some uh, urine, urine business. I'll be right back. Right, I have returned to this exciting stream. Stream of mystery. All right, so next step, I need to hide the... 
hide the taskbar icon or the task tray icon because we don't need it. Oh, what is all this? Oh, they're adding it. Um, they're doing it programmatically. Open my info P list. I don't have one. Where is it? Xcode. You don't need it anymore. Targets info. Info. Custom. Oh, okay. So I put that in here somewhere. Application is an agent. And copy this. Maybe I can just paste it in there. Nope. How do I add stuff to this list? First time you add, edit. Oh, there we go. Add row. What is it called? It's called uh, application as agent. is true. All right, let's run it now. All right, there we go. No more no more app icon down here. Hey, uh says so Xcode's supposed to merge these. We'll later merge them for you. Well, I'll believe it for now. Okay, so one internet problem solved, and we don't have a main window anymore, right? There's no more main window coming up. Good. All right, so the next trick is to start implementing this, like quit and all this other stuff. So let's look in here and see if quit comes from somewhere. No, it doesn't look like it. Let's look in here. Does quit have a special special function? It's not tied to anything, is it? Oh, action, main queue, quit, menu. Oh, okay, so there is a... Quit menu bar action, shared terminate self. Okay, this seems pretty easy. Let's uh, open up some split view action. Let's bring the menu back, main menu. All right, come over here. Nope, that's not what we want. We want new menu controller. There we go. All right, and somewhere in here, we want to drag this in here. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Action. Let's put an action in here. Nope. Okay. Well, fuck it then. Let's just copy this code. All right, and then we're gonna drag this over here to our quit button. All right, let's see if this works now. And quit. Oh, look at that. Quit button works. Magical. All right, let's create our about window. I'm just gonna copy I'm going to copy the about window from my other app. Where 
Where is it? it? Must be somewhere in here. I copy both at the same time. Let's see what happens. Oh, we got that. I'll copy this one too. Now where to go? I don't see it. All right, I guess let's do this the hard way. Window controller with a view in it. Why does everything look so different? About view controller, about window controller. NS window controller, NS view controller. Well, let's assume I have to build all this shit in here. What do they look like over here? Window controller scene. No. I don't understand some of this anymore. With NS window, I don't want NS window, I want. <coughs> I want whatever this shit is. What is it about window controller, NS window controller, NS view controller? Oh, I'm in the wrong place. There we go. All right, my bad. Window controller, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. All right. And then the innards of this just look like this. And then I copy to 2021. And then we're going to put the same little disclaimer this is Beat Bar guy has on his website. Steal this shit. Because I basically have the same thing here, too. All right, we're going to put some other stuff in here. But for now, this is good enough. Make this a little bit smaller. Switch this out a little bit. Why doesn't this word wrap by default? Truncates? No, let's wrap. Wrap it up. Some spacing in there. This here, make this a little bit smaller. Okay, make this a little bit bigger. All right. Now, when we look at this, I'm sure there was some sort of about action about window controller show window self. Okay, so I have this about window controller. I gotta create the window controller. All right, let's uh, create another file. Swift file, I'm gonna call it about window controller. And we're gonna steal some of this code out of here or all of it, I'm just gonna steal it all. All right, now we got to come back. App delegate as a member bring to front. Okay, we're going to steal some other code. 
Might as well put this in my app, in my app delegate anyway. All right, we gotta come in here and we gotta say this window controller is actually a about window controller. And back in my main menu controller, I'm gonna need an IB action. I'll just copy it again. Just copy this shit. And then we're gonna need that um it's about action. We'll come back and like reorganize all this stuff so it looks nicer. Here in main, I need to, oh no, I don't need main, I need um, main menu, zib. All right, and then I can grab, oops, wrong thing. Cancel, grab this, connect it to here. <clears throat> and now if I hit about, it crashes. Okay, so we've got a problem. Couldn't contain a controller with identifier about window controller. Storyboard doesn't contain a controller with identifier about window controller. Oh, I maybe just didn't name it about window controller. Storyboard ID. There we go. All right, let's try this again. Nope, crashed again. There's something else I'm supposed to name about window controller. Let's tap around in here. About window controller. Oh, maybe I named the wrong thing. No, that's fine. Storyboard idea about window controller. Maybe I didn't save it. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh, I should maybe in the about say, um, go where to go there we go all right so i have to put an icon there and a link to the github repo when i create it and all that other good stuff but there it is it's already upset about something what's it mad about Localization issue, add missing constraints. Sure, what did it do? Eight, 40 equals 243, leading space equals the default, bottom space equals default. Okay, whatever, it doesn't bother me. Can you actually resize this? I don't think so. Oh, you can. I don't want that. I don't want to be resizable. Add a window. Name this about internet time. Resize. No, no resize. I wanted to be able to minimize it. It shouldn't be restorable either. All you can do is close it, as it should be. Full control. Uh, 
All right, add temporary about window. Cool. Well, this hasn't been very exciting so far. Hard to get these things unclogged sometimes. Did you buy a 510 battery and cartridge yet, Daniel? All right. Oh. Well, it's been fun experimenting with streaming, sort of. Uh, I don't think there's a chance in hell anyone's ever going to watch me. I think there's a better chance of me like recording YouTube videos that are more focused. I feel like I feel like when I'm streaming I have the same problem that well, not the same problem. I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but it's just not that exciting watching someone program live on camera. It'd be, be more interesting if I did this in a more structured way for for an actual video or something, but I think it's pretty good. All right, well, we've got two view. Oh, I have two viewers now. I wonder who showed up. It's probably Joseph. Actually, a lot of people have wandered into and out of the stream tonight based on a user list, unless this user list just keeps like expanding. Expanding. Yeah, I guess two viewers is not too bad. Anyway, so far tonight we've got a working menu bar app. Uh, I need to get the preferences in place now too. Ooh, what just happened? What happened? Sometimes Xcode can be really buggy. Okay, so there's our there's our about view controller. We have this other main menu. I don't think we need this stuff. I'm going to delete it. Let's see what happens if I delete all of it. It's still going to work. All right, seems like it's working just fine. So I don't know why I have those extra views in, in PyBar, but uh, there's the about. And then let's, uh, let's see if we can set up the... Um, the other ones without without help. So we want another window controller. Don't like the side by side. All right, this one's gonna be preferences. So we'll title this one preferences somewhere. We'll, we'll put that title somewhere. Maybe it's on the window controller. No, I think it's down here somewhere. Title, there we go. <coughs> All right, time preferences. Doesn't look like that's what I actually want. I want I want to change the window title. I just did that and this other thing. Okay, where did I set it in here? Oh look, right there, title. All right, and we're going to set up a uh, window controller file for this. New file. Actually, wait, if I cancel and do um, Cocoa class, let's see if this works. NS window controller. Oh, check that out. All right, so this one is preferences. 
window controller. Maybe before I create the preferences window controller, what kind of preferences am I actually going to have? Like, what do I what do I really need to configure uh, for the user? You know, I could let them change like the polling time. I could let them show decimal places if they wanted to change the at sign. What in the preferences to not be huge? I like it that big. It's as big as a normal Mac OS icon. Look at it in relation to to the other icons. Besides, we're not talking about the icon right now. We're talking about preferences. Uh, I could set up launch at login like I do have in PyBar, but it's kind of glitchy. It doesn't work very well. So I'd rather just educate the users on, on you know, setting that up themselves. Change the font. I don't think you can change. You can't change the font as far as I know. All right, now I'm back down to one viewer. I hope you're happy. All right, so maybe, maybe I don't need a preferences view control. Maybe I should think about the interface for um, <clears throat> estimating different times. It would be cool if there was a way to bake that into just the menus, like a menu-driven interface for that, but I don't think there is really. I just need to think about this a little bit, because like, What should it look like? <coughs> All right, so we're not going to call this internet time preferences. We're going to call this uh, um, simulate internet time. Uh, all right, and then I'm going to call this simulate time. Don't need to create the zib. Save that in there. Okay, nothing special in there. I will do all this though. Don't need this. Don't need this view controller. Uh, let's let's get all the views together. Use put these controllers together. <coughs> I don't know what this thing is. Controllers aren't supposed to be in there. We go controllers, views. Uh, so be, let's put these into utilities. Uh, I found out today that a guy I used to work with, who I didn't like a whole lot, uh, killed himself. Mr. Uh, Mr. Boots Glenn killed himself. Suffocated himself with a bag. Uh, knowing Boots, he probably did a bunch of drugs or hit a ton of nitrous and then put a bag over his head. Probably not a bad way to go. He was a cool guy. But he's also kind of a dick sometimes. Now he's dead.
I should, uh, just for fun, I should log. Log some stuff. Uh, wonder if this works. Maybe I have to turn logging on. Yeah, looks like I have to turn logging on somewhere. Where do I do that? Oh, log, log level. If I just set that in here. Maybe not. This works. Oh, there we go. Timer started. Uh, it should be doing it every second. Oh, no, I didn't. I want it to log here. <coughs> I guess I should name this debug. There we go. I really feel like I can just set the time interval to three seconds because, you know, worst case scenario, you're off on the internet time switch by three seconds. I don't think it's actually going to break the bank or anything. Anyway, I was doing something. Uh, I was trying to rig up. Uh, simulate time. We're going to name it command, command S. Nope, command S. Simulate time. Sounds fancy. All right, and then we want to go into our main menu controller, and we want to say private lazy var simulate simulate time window controller equals ns storyboard. And the innards are name main bundle nil instantiate controller with identifier. Hope I need to identify it. Oh, let's see, have I named it yet? I haven't named it anything yet. With the controller, there we go. Window controller. This window controller should be, um, oops, wrong one. Oh, that's weird. So confused right now. Anyway, simulate time window controller. And then go back over here. Identifier as NS window controller. And 
And then we need a new IB action. Simulate action as menu item. And then simulate time window controller show window else. <coughs> Do a little split view again. For views. And then this is the wrong place again. Wrong view again, main menu. There we go. And then the simulate time. I want to drag it over there. All right, let's see if this works. Simulate time. All right, so we've got we've got a window up. Now it's just up to us to figure out how to how to visualize and simulate internet time. Ooh, all right, let's see how some other places um simulate time and are there any like cool interface components built into mac os that we could use is there a clock nope time date formatter it's not really what i want Date picker. What does this look like? Oh, it's literally a date. Not a date time picker. Graphical. That's a calendar. Okay, well, that's not anything we want. Image view, switch, path control, slider, determinant progress bar. Well. All right. Oh, that's not very exciting. Let's look up Mac OS visualizing time differences. Let's see if there's other people of World Clock Pro on the Mac App Store. It's got a bunch of different clocks. That's nifty. I can't tell time like that, though, so that's meaningless to me. Although that is a nifty idea. Just got to figure out how to draw a clock. That's all not great. Yeah, this is nifty. Very complicated though. I don't think I'm interested in actually doing something like that. I guess I'm thinking more in terms of something like this where where it shows um, it shows your local time and the internet time for that time. And then maybe you have one slider that changes that time. And then it updates all the different times down here at the bottom. The only problem with something like this is that it like begs the question, like what if the user wants to put in their own time zone?
This is a nifty interface too. <coughs> what shit? Um, shouldn't Firebase give you like API endpoints that you can hit? I guess I don't know how that integration works. Or is the user's browser actually hitting the f the database directly? That's insane. You know, you need some sort of API middleware or something. So far, I like this idea the most. <coughs> I wonder if you can like set At like the daytime. No, it doesn't seem like you can set a uh, <coughs> I was hoping I could like set this to a range of like twenty to. 80 or something, but it doesn't look like that's actually possible. Unless the indeterminate one lets me do that. That doesn't do shit. I wonder if I wanted to build this uh, the hard way, how hard it would be. Well, let's do it the lazy way. Let's start with a slider. I'm going to stretch it way out. All right, and then I'm going to set, I'm going to put up some text in here. We'll put this one, we'll have this one be the big internet time. Oh, I switched there was something real big. A large title, and we're gonna get another one of these. And we want this one to be uh, your local time. And let's get some labels in here and some small labels. 
we want. We want this to be labeled internet time. If it wants to be that far away, we'll let it be that far away. And then local time. And we'll try to center that one. It's probably a bad idea to try to center it. Okay, so there in time, local time. <clears throat> Uh, I don't really want this window to be resizable, so let's we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna come in here. This is window controller. We're gonna say you can't minimize it, you can't resize it, and it's not restorable. Okay, so we're gonna come over here and move this over here maybe we'll move this over here I wonder if there's like a specific secondary label color do secondary label color i feel like they should be closer i'm just gonna move them up a little bit so they feel good about it I'm going to move this up a bit. Feels like it's happy about being there. And we're going to save that for now. Um, let's make sure this is fixed over there. This is fixed over there. This is over there. It's over there. And let's set up some, some constraints. We want that one to be there. And maybe we do want this one to be zero from there. Let's make this zero. Gonna try to mess with everything. Um, this wants to be constrained to there. And then, sure, for now we'll say 25. And this one will do the same thing. 25, 25, do zero. Okay, that's happy about that. This isn't happy about this. I'm supposed to have a constraint there. There we go. Okay, so all this is happier. Let's get some constraints for this. Standard to standard. Let's have this be an even 10 pixels away. Okay, so now it's much happier about all that. Is this supposed to come up now? All right, let's refresh. Simulate time. All right, you've got metal API. Oh, I don't use the metal API. Okay, so now I've got a slider and I can slide it back and forth. All right, I already feel like this actually looks pretty nice so far. All I really need to do is I need to uh, make this slider, change the local time, which should update the internet time. So, so far, so good. So I'm gonna need to create a, uh, um, a simulate time controller. This is going to be a NSU controller. I'm going to call it simulate time controller. View controller. Put it in the controllers. And then we're going to go back over to our main view. And we're going to say simulate internet time is uh, simulate time view controller. All right, now we're gonna get the sp split set back up. Set over there, 
switch this to the simulate time view controller and we're going to get some of these labels in into our code so we need an outlet for internet time label and we're going to take this local time label Call this local time label. And then the slider is going to be time slider. And then we're going to need an action because I'm sure this spits out an action of some kind. Do action type any. Mm, What's the action that comes off a slider? Let's look at this for a second. Triggered segues, slider, received actions. Okay, it doesn't seem like it has fancy actions. Let's look at NS slider. I'm starting to get cold. Uh, if you are just tuning in, today's project is building a simple um, Swatch Internet Time Mac OS menu bar app. Started it from scratch <clears throat> about two hours ago. Uh, I've got it working. It shows the Internet Time in the menu bar. I can show a little, little Zoom version. Check it out. Uh, and then I can click on it. I think the icon's a good size. Dan doesn't agree. I feel like it's a good size compared to all my other mother icons. I think it's a nice looking icon. Uh, anyway, um, I've got like a rudimentary about thing popping up and then I'm working on this new um, the simulate time screen. So right now I'm looking up the uh, docs for NS slider. To see what kind of stuff it does. Handling mouse down events. Why is there a little wallet thing in a slider cell? I thought there was um change in a slider value per set slider, self slider, double value. All right, I'm just going to assume this action is just going to be constantly sending some data somewhere. So that's um, slider changed. Let's see what happened. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I want an action. I want an action. Action, there we go. Slider changed. I want it to come from in a slider. Wait, change that. There you go. All right, let's see what uh, what this says. Debug sender. Double value. Is there a double value? Double double value. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. <clears throat> uh, so it's only changing when I let down, when I let off the slider. Uh, I can't say I'm a big fan of that. Update always.
continuous mode. Oh, there's a, like a slider option. There's a circular slider. Oh no, that's not. That broke things. There we go. Tick marks. No need for tick marks. Jeez. Dog out there is getting crazy. Uh, hmm. Slider continuous mode. In slider continuous. <clears throat> Check the slider's continuous property and interface builder. It says there's a continuous property, huh? Where would this continuous property be? Oh, there it is. Continuous. <clears throat> oh, there we go. All right. So we got a slider that goes from zero to 100. Uh, how many minutes are there in a day? Let's see, there's 24 hours, 60 minutes, 1440. Let's configure this to go from zero to 1440. Start at zero. Okay, because now we can just, we know that whatever time it is, it's a solid time of minutes. It's still giving me decimals, but that's fine. Okay, so now we need to rig up some logic to automatically change the date and some other stuff. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna need a, um, it's been a long time since I've just set up some variables and stuff, private var time, private var date equals date. By default, it's just, date great uh, all right view did load so we want to um, local time label value no label text been a long time since I've changed a label programmatically. What is this doing? Label's not an NS text field, is it? No, it is an NS text field. Set string value. All right, date.
I do formatted? What's this going to look like? Oh, formatted's only neat in Mac OS 12 or later. Do ISO format. Oh, that's also. Okay. Google how you convert dates and times to a string using a date formatter. All right. Let's do private var date formatter equals date formatter equals. You guessed it. Date formatter. All right. All right, we'll do date, formatter, time style, medium. Okay. All right, and then we'll do date. Date formatter, string from date. Does this work? All right, that's definitely, it's definitely the time. It's a little wordier than I want. What if I do dot short? Nope, that's not, not the menu option I wanted. Simulate time. There you go, 8.23 p.m. All right, we're getting there. All right. Uh, Swift get date as time in seconds. Why not? Let's Google roll something real specific. Cool if I can get second of day. All right, what we just need, we need the hour. Oh, this is easy. Let's do this too. Steal some more code. Uh, time zone can be the current time zone, so I'm not going to worry about that. Let's hour, minute, and second. We really just need hour and minute. Oh, we also want to do internet time label string value equals date beats. Nearest beat. I was trying to teach my teach Laszlo to uh, talk on command. All right, we got internet time and local time. So far, so good. I have to use the bathroom. I'll be back again.
<coughs> All right, I've returned. I've returned. All right, so one thing I want to do is I want to set the slider to where I think we're at in the day. Um, so this time should be subjective to local time, which I think I'll be able to do this way. So um, let minutes equal hour times 60 plus minute, right? Now what we want, put this in parentheses just to be sure. And then we want time slider double value equals minutes. I didn't mean to put the convert minutes to double. All right, let's see what this looks like. 828. Yeah, day's almost over. I agree. Should have got some water. Okay, so we're going to have to figure out. The panel's clogged. Uh. I have to figure out a couple of things here. We have to figure out how to convert, you know, how many minutes there have been in a day back to uh, local time. When the slider changes. Uh, we've got half an hour. right back. All right. <clears throat> All right. So I guess the next thing for me to do is to hook up the slider value to uh, all this other shit. So I need to convert. Um, I need to like set the calendar component. I wonder if I can like set the calendar component. But anyway, we'll set up a new function. Private func. Um, space it out. What we can do is we'll just get this double value. Uh, let slider int equal int sender double value. And then I wonder. Setting hour by setting alley. Oh. Minute. Uh. 
Oh, oh, okay. Well, maybe I can just divide it. All right, so let's do let hours equals slider int modulo 60. No, we need like the remainder. I've done this before. I've done this in Python. I've fucking done this in Python. I've done it in Swift. Um, Swift turn minutes into hours and minutes. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. I was I was very close to having that right. So, so, <clears throat> so let hours is uh, well minutes divided by sixty. We need as an int. Divide by sixty. I can turn that into an int just to make sure, and then let minutes equals slider int modulo 60. Sorry, not modulo, modulo. And then, I wonder if this is really gonna work. Okay, interesting. All right, so um, let new hour date equals calendar get by setting hour, and we'll set the hour to hours of date. And then let new minute date equal calendar date. Oh, I could have done the whole thing. I'll just do the whole thing. by setting hour, hours, minutes, seconds, and then date. And now we just need, we need a function that's going to do all this. Update interface, put all that in there. Technically, um, I only want this to happen initially. So we'll do update interface and then we'll set this. Should always give us a date and time. And then we want to do update, update interface. All right, let's see what happens. Simulate time. And it crashed. Unexpectedly found nil. Oh, it's because the time can't go all the way to the end because 1440 isn't actually like a, um, isn't a time? That's my guess, that's what I'm gonna guess. Let's come over here and let's, let's uh, change the slider value. Should be um, 1440 minus one, so 1439. Try it out again. Okay, looking good so far. 12 a.m., 11.39 p.m. Okay, so I'm doing something wrong here.
So do a word date. That's gonna work. All right, we can go all the way down. And we can go all the way up. Seems okay, doesn't seem to be bugging out at that point. 12 a.m., 12 p.m. All right, so this is cool, this is working. It would maybe be nicer if it was stepped according to internet time. You can't you can't edit it with your with your mouse keys. Uh, and maybe it would be nice if it was more precise. I mean, it's cool that this works as it is. Three seventy five, three seventy four. Yeah, maybe I should maybe I should step it to internet time specifically. Yeah, so zero to nine nine nine. So doesn't internet time start at nine or at zero? There should be a zero, right? Zero zero zero. And then step it at a thousand. I think that's a good idea. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Of course, then it involves uh, converting internet time to uh, to dates. Wonder if I can do that. Date plus beats. I'm thirsty. Uh. Should definitely be a um, step according to seconds. It's doing seconds. I don't really want to do seconds. But I guess if I if I convert minutes to seconds, then. Mm, let's do it. Let's let's try it out. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change this from zero to ninety nine, and then I'm going to set it according to the current internet time. All right, so the slider changed isn't in hours and minutes anymore. It's actually um, it would be nice if it was giving me the date. I can convert beats to a date. Again, that way I should just make a like. Um, a beats class that's an extension of int and then have a special function on it that's for converting uh, beats to a date in a time zone or something this is almost doing that I'm not sure how it's using this int dot beats thing. Well, anyway, so far we've got basically all the components that we need to make this thing work. All we really need to do now is 
Um, do the little the other times, you know, so like New York time. Should probably do the do the four time four main time zones up at the top. It's like PSD, you know, whatever. <clears throat> I don't I don't care what your local time is. I just want to oh. we can't zoom in on any of this stuff. All right. Well, let's look at this. This is giving a preference to US based people, but that's fine with me. So I'm gonna copy a clock. I'm gonna make this smaller. It's very small. It's too small. That's very small. Headline, sub headline. Oh, the title one. That's pre that's pretty big. It's probably too big, but because we're gonna need four of them, aren't we? We're gonna need there's actually five. There's five different. All right, so we'll do title two. And this one we'll set to well we'll keep them all at twelve thirty PM. Let's get another label in here. And we'll set this one to a couple of these mountain by Denver, isn't it? Denver and then central. And then we want like New York over here. New York. Uh, what's a good central time? Chicago. Denver. All right, we'll just look this up. Biggest cities per time zone. isn't oh check this out here we go at uh, mexico uh, yeah i'll go with that so phoenix phoenix mexico city and then new york city I'll just do NYC, the Big Apple. All right, so this looks like a fucking mess so far. Um, yeah, we're gonna need one for Hall. Uh, maybe we should do them in some sort of order, like off of GMT or something, because GM, you know, so do London. London, Lagos, Cairo, Moscow. A lot of dates. It's a whole 24. Wonder if there's a better way. Is there a better way to display this data? I should just do by Oh, 
really like the idea of um, No. I want this to be the MST. That was CS Mountain Time, Central Time. It's interesting that Mexico is CST and Eastern. <clears throat> kind of like the way that these are linked together. Let's imagine, let's, let's pretend that this looks good. Okay, so they just need better spacing. Um, and we'll do New York. All right, but I do like how these are all kind of linked together. They look pretty decent to me. We just need uh, more of them for more places. Six rows for all 25 different time zones. Might be fun. zone map doesn't sh doesn't give us like the oh cat Wh what gmt cet pst mst cst est NST. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. So I think this is, uh, this is cool. It's just a matter of making these, getting these to be evenly spaced. Like that, like that. Okay, let's move these up.
It's a little tight. Looks a bit better, doesn't look 100% even, but. What are these set to? Standard. I don't know what that means. Standard equal leading space equals default. Oh, I see. Get that in place. But let's move it a little bit. Oops. Let's get the bottom one in place too, because then we can figure out the other ones more easily. And then this one needs to go to standard. And then this one needs to move. Link up with standard. It's gripping watching, I'm sure. And then let's put it away at 16. All right, let's should all move into place. All right, so we just need to figure out a standardized size for these. Really has more to do with the text size than anything else, so. We should all connect to each other. One and three, what we want. New York City. Let's say New York. New York. All It'd be cool if I could like make these make these all have the same width. And then I want them all to connect to the same I want standard value. Gotta stick there. And this one's gotta stick there. Okay, what's ambiguous here? Oh, and this needs to be stuck to the bottom. Oh, well, this, this doesn't need to be stuck to the bottom. This needs to be stuck. How many pixels is that? 16. There we go.
Instruments for exposition. Is that supposed to have a standard? There we go. All right, so if I made this bigger. There we go. So far, that's good for that. If this changed to like 1 p.m., it could get smaller. Oh, that's not good. All right, well, I'll have to worry about that later. For now, let's just move these into place, pretend that they're in the right spot. Oh, it's almost end of stream time. I was hoping to wire these up, but I don't think I'm going to get to wire these up. Uh, let's try it real quick. Look like a bunny. Yeah, get these labels in here. All right, this one needs to be uh, PST time label. And this one needs to be MST time label. And this one needs to be in here. There we go. MS CST time label. And then last but not least, EST time label. All right, and so now every time we do the update the interface, what we want to do is we want to say <clears throat> CPST time label string value equals date formatter string from. And what we want to do is we actually want to do calendar date by setting. Setting our oops. No, no, we want to do date. Let's just change the time. We just want to change the time zone. Swift change time zone of date. Date formatter time zone. Hmm, let's try this out. All right, looks like someone must have fixed this. So let's let's try this. Um, I'm just going to add this an extension onto date. Oops. Let's see if this works. String from date convert to time zone. Why do I know what the current time zone is? Swift current time zone. Time zone current. And then with this one, we want to do time zone. Can 
a minute. Abbreviation. Do PST. This work. Just uh, we'll do what it says. We'll just break. Look at that. Okay, so let me get the other ones in place really quick. Um, we'll get the other one that we can see in place. Oh, that didn't work. Did I not? Oh, I put a capital letter in there by mistake. I'll have to go back and fix that. All right, there we go. Look at that. So now you get the internet time and you get the time in several different dates. I really want to wire those other ones up. I'm going to do it. Uh, CST time label. CST. And then the other ones, MST. MST. Uh, and then let me go back into the view real quick just to set up some temporary constraints on these. Um, It's just going to take too long. Okay, let's just see it work. There you go. All right, the thing moving around doesn't look good. But we see that it's working as it should. So I just need to figure out if this is actually a good interface or not. But I think it'll be fine. It's going to be six rows of different times being shown, but I think it's a better interface than other ones. Anyway, I'm going to commit what we have so far. Start of a simulate time interface. Oh, no place to push it to. All right, well, that's it for me tonight. The light has turned red. It's time to go walk the dogs. It was a, uh, it was a pleasure. Actually got pretty far into building this app. It's basically almost done, and then I can push it out to the app store. Just need to figure out this interface, you know, make this interface work better or look better, you know, and not have the New York move around. You know, a wiggly New York is nobody's friend. All right, until next time. See ya.